Dash. Yeah. yeah. In the green room, man. Yeah. With your boy Jay Green, man. It's an honor and a privilege to have you in the green room, man. Yeah, likewise, likewise, man. Thanks for having me, man. For sure, for sure. I've been trying to get with you for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, but timing is always right when it's right. Hell yeah. Yeah. I want to take it back because, matter of fact, let me kind of hip the audience, anybody watching. T Dash is, is a R&B artist, a blues artist, a country artist, singer, you know what I'm saying? That's the umbrella, but definitely... 2020 viral Houston, Texas singing sensation. You know what I'm saying? And we got him in the green room, so we're going to talk about it, man. Yeah, 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 man. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. For sure. Where you from originally? Man, straight out of South Park, man. Uh, Houston, Texas, for sure. But with, you know, how we say it, South Park, Texas. You know okay. So, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I feel like you have one of those styles that really, really represents Texas. Like the culture of Texas, the soul of Texas, mm -hmm. just the way that we... We vibe, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been told that? Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you can tell by the way I talk, man. I'm, yeah, it, I'm, I'm country, you know, the country slang and you know how we do it, man. So, yeah, we got that little old smooth, smoothness about us. We smooth country out here. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially, especially in South Park, man. Yeah, especially for sure, in South Park. For sure, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Give uh, some of the viewers, I guess, some, uh, some background story. What was it like for you coming up in South Park? Coming up in South Park, man, we started out pretty easy, man, when, when it was just, you know, mom and dad. Then mom and dad, you know, separated, and then it got tough. It got tough for us, man. So uh, my older brother, older sister, man, it was just us, man, and we had to get it how we had to get it, you know. So I tried to, I, I tried to do the best I could, man. My mama raised us the best she could. She, you know, working plenty of jobs, two and three jobs, man, and and went from there, man. Well, for and, sure. You know, shout out to my moms, man. She did the best she could, and I think she did a hell of a job, man. I think she did great being on her own, you know. So, shout out to you, mama. Salute to you, man. No, for real, man. About a week after Mother's Day, too. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so basically when you were coming up, it was, you know, kind of regular, like, family structure. But, you know, you had little hardships after your parents divorced. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So, so when you was coming up... A high school, like it's high school, junior high, it, was you ever getting in trouble or what was the kind of thing? Well, I was like a, I really wasn't no bad kid, man, but I was, I was, a, what we call ranking, you know what I'm saying? I like to talk about people all the a time. A comedian. Man. You was a funny yeah, guy. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you would say that's a comedian, man. And so, a lot of people who know me, man, yeah, man, I had the jokes, man. I had the jokes for days, man. And I wish I could get grades for that, man. And I probably would have been a straight A student, mm -hmm. you know, if I can, you know, that old comedy was, uh, you know, graded for me. So, but nah, I was, I was a right kid, man. You know, my mom was, you know, she, she, she wasn't no slouch, man. She was going to. Tell your, tell your butt up, man. She was going to get at you. So I had to, you know, take care of my business. Sure. But I strayed away a little bit, man, you know, trying to be a comedian. But, yeah, it was, it was good, though. It was okay. good. So basically you was charismatic. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. def that's definitely something I get from you, even with the singing and the videos that went viral. Yeah. You kind of had, you know, got away. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I try to be, a, you know, a little smooth cat, man. And to myself, uh, the singing... A lot of people didn't know I could sing. Really? I really just, I didn't, I didn't showcase it, man. A lot of the talent shows I missed. When you was coming up? Yes, a lot of them I missed, man. I think it was, I think I didn't want to be judged, or, and I didn't want to face that, that crowd at that time, you know. But I, people knew, some people knew, especially my girlfriends, you know, I was singing on the phone. You know I would saying? be too, if I had that voice. <laughs> yeah, man, I was singing on the phone back then, so it was hidden. But some people knew, some people knew, okay. you know, kind of later, later on in high school, probably my, you know, 11th, 12th grade year, that's when they started hearing me. But I still never did the talent shows, man. I, I wasn't ready for it. So you kind of grew up in that era where it's cool to be tough, cool to be gangster, cool to be street. Yeah. Not yeah. like, not like nowadays, but. Yeah, you know, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was a different, yeah, it was a different yeah. back then, man. It was way different, man. And you had to get your fight on, man. You had to. You had to actually show you had some hands, man. You know what I'm saying? When I was coming up, so um, we weren't trying to do all of those shooting, shooting up, shoot them up, bang, bang stuff, man. We, you had to come on with it, man. Okay. You had to go fight the biggest dude, get your respect, and then I was always small, still small, you know. So uh, yeah, I had to carry my weight, man. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, without without trying to go the street way with the interview, because I got a lot of want to talk to you about. Definitely want to talk about the music. But did the streets ever become a part of your life? No, I was I was always around it, but I never did take 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 part in it, man. And that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, so my my peoples, my family, yeah, yeah, they they did it. I've been around it all my life, man. But that was something I, I just I was always afraid of jail. And I ain't, I ain't afraid to say that on here. I was always afraid of jail, so I was like, mm, that ain't for me, you know. But I've been around it all my life, though. Definitely, coming from South Park. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, Jurassic Park, what they say. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what they call it now, Jurassic Park, man. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so what, at what age did you realize that, damn, I have a gift, a voice? Ah, <sighs> man. What age, man? Uh, I think it was probably 11, 12, around in that, a lot of stuff happened to me with around 11 years old, man. It's like, I think that's when I start finding who I was, man. At kind 11. of that beginning of adolescence. Yeah, yeah, 11 years old, man. And my mom, she always sung to me when I was little, man, as far as singing me to, singing me to sleep. Um, so I would always hear singing in my head, singing in my head, and then I just started mimicking things that I heard. And you know, in the shower, man, you know, everybody cold in the shower, man. So I would be singing in the shower, and one day my mom was like, Boy, you, you sound like you really can sing a little bit. And I was like, For real? <laughs> well, I, I thought I could, you know. And then when I started hearing, when other people started telling me that, Man, you sound good, you sound good. So that was around in that 11, 12 when I started feeling like you can hear me a little bit more now. You can hear me a little bit more. I can sing around family. This, that, and normally I would just be in my room, just singing to myself, everything I heard on the radio, man. And I finally started letting my family hear me a little bit and they would give me that confidence. So as I grew more and more and more, as far as family knew I could sing, but everybody else, nah, they, they couldn't, they didn't know. So that came later. Yeah. Not just saying this cause you hear, but you got one of the like most marvelous voices for real. Man, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Man. I, a lot of people didn't told me that, but it's a lot of times, too. man, a lot of times, I, I, you know how you're your own worst critic. You, you, you hard on yourself, and I, I think that's me just being real hard on myself, man. I, I hear people say that. I hear them tell me that. I appreciate it, you know. I, I try to remain as humble as I can at all times, you know. And uh, I, I, I love the compliments. I appreciate the compliments, man. But I still be battling with that, man. That's like, that's the that's the yeah. mark of a great craftsman. A, a, you know, somebody who, who cares about what they're doing. That's the mark that they're never satisfied. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I just I try to be as versatile as versatile as I can be. Um, I used to practice so many different genres, man. Uh, when I was younger, man, my voice was a lot lighter, so I started out with Michael Jackson. <laughs> so, yeah, they used to make fun of me, man, you sound like a little girl, you know, this, that, and the other. So I would take that feedback, like, man, I ain't no girl, you know, so I'm like, man, I can't wait till my voice get a little deeper, you know, so as I grew older, man, it started getting a little deeper, man. So I started out with Michael Jackson, I would mimic Al Green, I would mimic the females too. So like Diana Ross, Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, man, and all them, man. I used to just, I wanted my voice to be as dynamic as it can be. You know, I didn't want to just be in one box, you know. I just wanted to be able to sound like anybody. Yeah, definitely.